Welcome and thank you for joining me today. It's another beautiful day outside and I'm ready to do some cooking and to share some great recipes with you. We're gonna make pollo cacciatore, a famous Italian dish that you might have seen before menus, maybe even tried it. But today we're gonna learn how to cook it. And more than that, I'd like to show you the technique. So what, what's the secret and the magic behind it? So you can take that magic, combine it with your own passion and then create your own beautiful cuisine inside your own kitchen. Let's have a quick look at our ingredients today so we know where to start from. Uh, bone in, chicken thigh. Uh, I like to use uh, the, the bone in the chicken. It will give a li little extra flavor to our sauce. Beautiful local garlic. Uh, mushrooms and olives, calamara olives. Um, can whole canned tomato uh, in tomato puree and onions and we have a little a beautiful bouquet of herbs so we're gonna pick for this dish in particular we're gonna pick rosemary lots of really nice fragrant flavors they're gonna melt together in a beautiful polo cacciatore let's get cooking then so first step from uh, with the chicken we're gonna season it with salt and pepper and we're going to need to sear it. So high heat and what we need to do, a little bit of olive oil in our frying pan, a pinch of chili flakes which always add the little extra love and we're going to let the oil come to temperature. So we want a high heat so we can sear and hear that magic sound that we heard before that shh. So we just need a couple of minutes. So the oil is starting to ripple slightly and uh, a bit of smoke is starting to come out. So that's when I want to add my chicken. And you can hear that beautiful sound. What we're going to do is going to get some really nice color on each side of the chicken. And then we're going to build our sauce. About uh, one or two minutes per side. So I'm going to season the bottom of the chicken since I didn't do it. And I'm going to add a little sprig of rosemary that is going to add a little bit of flavor to the oil. That flavor is going to seep right into my chicken and start infusing it with great flavor. So the polo has been cooking for about uh, three minutes now. And as I turn it, you're going to see some beautiful color. Now the time might vary depending on how high your initial heat was. But at this point I'm going to lower my temperature. And we're gonna move back to our cutting board and start building the flavors for our sauce. I have a half of a white onion. And you can kind of chop it however you like. A small dice would be definitely nice. I have beautiful local garlic. I'm gonna chop it quite uh, coarse. I like the idea of having big chunks of garlic. Uh, we have some uh, creamy mushrooms that I just quartered and some beautiful Kalamata olives. The pit is still on. I like to think that also the pit, just like the, the bone in the chicken, adds extra flavor. Some people might call me lazy, but that's okay. So what we need to do now, we're gonna start adding all these aromas in our sauce and allow it to make its magic. And you wanna make sure you scrape all the goodness that is at the bottom of the pan. So I added my onion, I'm going to add my garlic and as you can see with this wooden spoon that has made plenty of sauce in the past, I'm just going to help it along and scrape all the caramelization that happened at the bottom. I'm going to add a little bit more rosemary. A few olives. My mushroom. Just a pinch of salt. The olives are quite salty already, but it never hurts. And then, just to make sure that all the flavor are gonna open up and make sure that everything is gonna combine together, I have a beautiful Chardonnay from Cedar Creek.
And you can really start smelling all the aromas in this dish. And to finish, I'm gonna add a few uh, canned tomatoes that I just crushed lightly with my hand. And uh, most of our work is now done. All we have to do is we're gonna cover it. The temperature is still on, uh, on medium, medium low. I'm gonna cover it and let it cook for about uh, probably 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, so if you were gonna use uh, salmon, uh, the cooking process would be a lot quicker. So maybe seven or eight minutes. Um, you don't have to worry about overcooking the chicken in this case because what we're doing is really infusing all the flavors inside. And I also like to add a little bit of the olive juice. They have a lot, of, there is a lot of flavor inside and they're gonna add a really nice aroma. As you can see, everything is in there. It's starting to bubble very gently. You want, that's exactly what you're looking for. And I'm gonna cover it, let it cook for about 20 minutes and we're gonna be ready to eat. So our chicken is cooking. It's time to take a, a little rest and try to figure out the next steps of our, of our uh, meal. So first thing first, a little bit of wine for the chefs. And what I'm drinking is the Chardonnay from Cedar Creek that I used in my preparation. And that is just uh, sort of the first choice that I would uh, accompany my, my uh, polo cacciatore with. But the truth is that I don't think a bottle of wine is gonna be enough to satisfy our craving. So, uh, you know, anything that is uh, a lighter body, there is nothing particularly spicy, so you can choose your favorite Pinot, you, sh you can really, uh, adapt to whatever you, you feel like it would be a, a good wine to go, to go with this dish. Now, something else to think about is what we'll serve our polo cacciatore with. And um, classically, and I do like to be classical at certain times, is beautiful roasted potatoes. You can find uh, excellent uh, nugget potatoes at this time of the year. They're full of flavors. They require just a little bit of cooking and it would just be a perfect accompaniment for, for our dish. But the truth is that no meal is perfectly completed unless you have the perfect dessert to finish it. And I am a, a big dessert lover. So walking in the markets at this time of the year, you find beautiful peaches. And I, I, I would suggest that it would be a really nice way to end our uh, polo cacciatore dinner. A little peach, you can add a little bit of ginger, a little bit of chocolate ice cream, and I think we are in business. So let's have a final look at my chicken. It's looking really nice. I'm just gonna let it cook it and cover for just a couple of minutes, reduce the sauce slightly. It's a good time to do a final tasting. So it's been about, it's been cooking for about 20 minutes now. The season is, is, is uh, just perfect. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of fresh basil. And don't forget, the best way to use fresh herbs is just to rip them up with your hands and you're gonna be able to smell all the aromas really coming through now. And this is our chicken cacciatore. You can spoon a little bit of the sauce on top, make sure that uh, everything is covered. And I think we're ready to eat. When I'm cooking for friends, it's a lot easier and a lot more fun if you just plate everything in one plate for everybody to share. So you can pass it around and everybody can serve themselves. So this is gonna be our polo cacciatore and then you can have anything else that you decide to serve with it.